What's up, Metalheads? My name's Jamie. This is the Blades and EDC channel. Thank you guys so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. And today I'm going to be doing my overview of the Quiet Carry 9. Best knife of the year so far. And there's not even a close second, for me anyway. Of the knives I've handled so far this year, this one's it's on a level all its own. It really is. This is a... Uh, this knife was sent in to me by my friend Brian, uh, Lord Needham on Instagram. I will link his Instagram in the description below. Give him a follow. I don't. One thing I do want to know about this knife that I can't find and don't know why is why it's called the Nine. Um, I don't. Anybody know? If you know why it quite carry named it the Nine, comment below and let me know because I can't find anything that tells me why they did that. It's just an odd name and it's not nine inches long. That's what she said anyway. But, uh, all right, let's go over the specs. It's actually 7.54 inches long with a 3.28 inch blade, uh, 118 thousandths on the blade stock. The weight's 3.9 ounces. It's CPM 20 v CV blade still. It's on cage ceramic ball bearing, has a ceramic ball detent, titanium pocket clip and backspacer. Carbon, you get different uh, versions with different inlays, carbon fiber. You can get it with a uh, coated blade or a non-coated blade. Um, it's a frame lock. Thumb stud deployment only. Let's do a few size comparisons real quick. We will start with the Quiet Carry Drift. Quite a bit bigger than the Drift. And here's another one. Let's do the Spyderco Para 3. Similar in length, so a little longer than Para 3. Um, not by much though. Here is uh, the Chavez Sangre 229. Quite a bit smaller than that. Um, how about the Yojimbo 2 by Spyderco? It's a little shorter than the, the uh, Yojimbo. Um, what about the Jaeger M by Brian Brown? Those are going to be close, very close in size. Those two are. Uh, we always do a penguin, so we got to do a penguin. Uh, the Nimble W. Where's it at? Where'd I set it at? There it is. Trying to show you knives that are in this price range or up there. Here's the F5.5. Then we'll do the bug out. Always do a bug out. Here's the Benchmade bug out. I should throw one more out there. The Wee Ziphius. Big knife. Such a big knife. All right. I mean, I think I've already given it away by telling you it's the best knife I've handled so far this year that I really like this knife. Nothing to complain about on this one. Only thing, it's not really a complaint, more of a nitpick here. As all their other knives have always been uh, Vanax Super Clean. As far as I know, this is the first knife they've used 20CV, or first knife they didn't use Vanax. So. That's a bit, I don't know. I don't know why they decided to go that route. Maybe try to keep the price down a little bit, but the price on, on these are $330. So they didn't succeed if that's what they were doing because you know they were selling the Drift and other knives in Vanex for less than this. Granted, this has much more intricate work being done here. Uh, I mean, they use this knurled milling on a lot of their knives. They give you an option, but they don't generally do inlays. Um, as far as I know, I think this may be their first knife with inlays. I could be wrong about that. Don't hold me to that. Um, pocket clip is reversible, I think. I believe, yeah, I believe when you take this out, you can take that out and flip it over. But I am not sure about that because the pocket clip actually slides under the scale, but the screw goes through the top of the scale here. So I think that little thing there is there so you, could, you can reverse it. It has to be. Yeah, because that's what the screw is going in. So you'll be able to reverse the pocket clip if you're a lefty. Of course, this one's a frame lock, so I don't know if lefty's really going to like it or not. Because it does, the lock bar is sensitive with this one. Um, if I get on the lock bar, well, not, not really. I'm all on that lock bar. Maybe I'll take that back. I can tell I'm on it, but it's not making me fell it, you know. Because I got my middle finger all over that lock bar right now. It's still... Still deploys great. I guess you'd call this a clip point blade. Clip point, drop point. Mm, I'll let you decide. You decide what you want it to be. 
the action in this knife is amazing amazing they did such a good job on this knife the detent's amazing the fit and finish is amazing do not know who the OEM is on these uh, I don't think anybody knows they are made in Taiwan though they are not made in China I do know that much so I'm not sure maybe it's the same company that does spider codes work over there I don't know I don't know but I would think so because you know something like the stovepipe I could see whoever made the stovepipe being the people making this but that's just a guess on my part yeah fantastic knife man love it love it love it love it love it ergos are amazing absolutely phenomenal you can choke up a little bit yeah this is generally not the kind of knife i would buy with this big tall blade and it's just a bigger knife than bigger looking than i would normally buy but man after you get this one in hand and deploy it it's like yeah i really want one now I almost bought it, right? I almost bought this when they had the one with the nebula, fat carbon inlays, but I didn't. I backed out, chickened out, and uh, kind of regretting that now, but I'm sure they're going to be making more of these. This is going to become another one, like the Drift, it would be my guess, that they're going to sell lots and lots and lots of them. But I would love to see them do it in Vanex. I would really like to see them do it in Vanex, because they're the Vanex people, you know? They do all the Vanex knives. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up. I'm going to stop drooling on this thing. I'll let you guys drool on it for a couple seconds before I end this video. Thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you guys on the next one.